السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد so after thanking and praising Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala for what he has conferred upon us of favors and blessings that cannot be counted and enumerated, we like to express our uh, gratitude to our Salafi brothers here in Delaware, Masjid Ikhlas, for extending the invitation to, and likewise their good thoughts regarding their Muslim brother. In order to come with you today to speak regarding this uh, very important topic, a topic concerning a khasla or a characteristic that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, has described as being the characteristic of the religion. For he has said, والسلام, Indeed, every deen, it has a distinguishing characteristic. Every deen has a quality or a characteristic to it. الإسلام, and the characteristic of Al-Islam is Al-Haya, is that of shame or, shy or, mo- or shyness or modesty. And so the intent today, bi'ithni Allahi ta'ala, is to look at a statement amongst the statements of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi wa sallatu salam, regarding this very important uh, characteristic. And it is in that which has come on the authority of Abu Mas'ud Uqba ibn Amr al-Ansari al-Badri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna mimma adraka al-nasu min kalam al-nubuwat al-ula idha lam tastahyi fasna' ma shit that he said that the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam stated indeed from that which the people still have with them that which the people have encountered from the speech of the first prophethood is the statement if you feel no shame or no shyness fasna' ma shit then do whatever it is that you will. Hadith is reported by Al Bukhari. So we're going to look at the, look at this narration, inshallah Taala, in light of the speech of one of our scholars, that of a Sheikh Saleh Al Sheikh. But before going to the explanation of the narration, we want to look at uh, something brief regarding the biography of the narrator. And the narrator, his name is Abu Mas'ud Uqba Ibn Amr Al Ansari Al Badri. It is mentioned concerning his biography that he is Abu Mas'ud, Uqba ibn Amr, ibn Tha'laba al-Ansari, and he is from Banu al-Hadith, from Banu al-Hadith, ibn al-Khazraj. And he, is well known to, he was well known by his kunya, as there are a number of companions who were more known by their kunya than they were by their actual name. He was well known by his kunya, Abu Mas'ud, and he is known as Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, even though he did not witness the battle of Badr according to many of the people of knowledge. However, he was called al-Badri because he lived near Badr, because he lived near Badr. And he witnessed the second Al-Aqaba pledge, along with the Messenger of Allah, and he at that time was very young in age. And he witnessed the battle of Uhud and all of the other battles that took place thereafter. And Abu Mas'ud died in the year 41 or the year 40 according to some of the historians. And it was stated that he died during the days of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And at that point in time, Ali, he had placed them in charge of Kufa. He had placed them in charge of Kufa. Uh, during the days of the Battle of Sifin. As it relates to the narration itself, uh, Sheikh Saleh, he mentions, هذا الحديث فيه كلام على شعبة من شعبة الإيمان that this narration, it contains inside of it speech regarding a branch amongst the branches of faith. As we know that, the narration mentions الإيمان بدو والسبعون شعبة the Iman is seventy some odd branches. What's the highest of them? The statement, La ilaha illallah wa adnaha, the lowest of them, is to remove something harmful from the pathway. And Haya is a branch of Al Iman. Here you have 
uh, a proof amongst the proofs of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a uh, for the definition of Iman as being uh, belief of the heart, statement of the tongue, and action of the limbs. So where in the narration do we have the action of the limbs? Removal of something harmful from the pathway. Where do we have a statement of the tongue? It's clear. The statement, La ilaha illallah. So where do we have the belief of the heart? al haya Okay, al haya is an affair of the heart. It's an affair of the heart. Tayyip. And so, <clears throat> it is a branch amongst the branches of al iman And that is none other than al haya وَقَدْ أُسْنِدَ الْكَلَامِ هُنَا إِلَى مَا بَقِيَ لِلنَّاسِ مِنَ النُّبُوَةِ الْأُولَى and so the speech here has been attributed to and attached to that which remained with the people from the first prophethood. فقال, so he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, inna mimma adraka nasu min kalam in nubuwatil ula, indeed from, from that which is still with the people, that which the people have encountered from the speech of the first prophethood. And this necessitates anna hunaka kalam and adraku hunas min kalam al anbiya. This necessitates and, shoo, and shows that there is some speech that the people have with them or that they have encountered from the speech of the prophets. And the meaning of al idraq and nahu fashaf and nasi. The meaning of the idraq or the encountering here is that it is it spread amongst the people. It had spread amongst the people and was known amongst them. And they were circulated one to another. And it reached them from the NBA. It reached them from the prophets themselves. As it relates to his statement, nasu, from that which the people have encountered, the men here is tab'idiyya. The men here, it is tab'idiyya, meaning that it is a part of something. It is not the sum of all of the speech which they have from the first prophethood, but it is a part of that. Meaning that there were other speech that was spread amongst the people which was known amongst them to have come from the prophets of old. And this is from that. The statement is a part of that. And so, uh, it is the statement that if you feel no shyness, fuss not, mash it, then do whatever it is that you will. Now, when you about ma. أُدْرِكْ مِنْ كَلَامِ النُّبُوَةِ الْأُولَى وَالنُّبُوَةِ الْأُولَى الْمَقْصُودِ بِهَا النُّبُوَاتَ مُتَقَدِّمَةِ Now, and so what is intended by النُّبُوَةِ الْأُولَى The first prophethood, what is intended by way of that is the prophethoods of old. The earlier prophethoods. The earlier prophethoods. Meaning, أَوَائِلْ الرُّسُلِ Meaning from the first and the earliest of the messengers. From the first and the earliest of the messengers and prophets, such as Nuh and Ibrahim, uh, yani, and their likes, because they were from the earliest of the prophets and messengers. For Nuh, he was amongst the people for how long giving dawah? 900 years? 950? How long did he live? Huh? A thousand? Some of them, they mention that he actually lived to be 1,650. 1,650. So he was Atwal al Anbiya Umara. He lived the longest out of the prophets. He was known as the longest living prophet. Uh, that 950 years was his da'wah. Was his da'wah amongst them. And so when you're giving da'wah for that long, how much of your speech is going to remain amongst the people? Nuh, alayhi salam, he had much speech that uh, was known uh, amongst the people, that, that had spread amongst him and amongst his followers. Ibrahim, similarly, he had speech that was spread from him. وَكَذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَعْطَاهُ اللَّهُ وَأَوْحَاهُ إِلَيْهِ And uh, likewise, there was that speech that Allah Ta'ala had given him and had revealed to him within his scriptures. So when he says that the first prophethood or the first prophethood, what is intended by way of that is the earlier generations of the prophets that were far removed 
from those people who had actually inherited the speech from them. They were a long way from them. For yakum muqtada al nubu al ula. So this term al nubu al ula it necessitates that there were earlier prophethoods and there were latter prophethoods. There were earlier prophethoods and there were latter prophethoods. He says, and this is that which is correct. Because if the term is left general, فَإِنَّمَا يُعْنَى بِهَا الرُّسُلْ وَالْأَنْبِيَاءَ الْمُتَقَدِّمُونَ What's intended by way of that is يعني, the first prophets and messengers. يعني, the first and earlier prophets and messengers. أَمَّا مُوسَى وَعِيسَى As for Musa and Isa and the likes of them, وَهَكَذَا they, uh, uh, and so on and so forth from the, from the Anbiya of Bani Israel, Dawood and other than them, Ha'ula min al muta'akhira. Then they are considered to be from the latter prophets. They're considered to be from the latter prophets. Meaning from the prophets and messengers that came later. Now, as it relates to his statement, Mimma adraka nasu min kalam al ula from that which the people have encountered from the speech of the first prophethood. يعني أن هناك أو أن هذا الكلام كلام أنبياء. It means that this speech, this statement, is a statement of the prophets. It is a statement of the prophets. And therefore, it has its import. And it has its benefits that are connected to it. And it has its importance. He mentioned some Arabic language benefits because you'll find that some of the uh, manuscripts of the 40 hadith they have the word uh, as testahi uh, testahi now while others such as what we have here in front of us it is testahi testahi and both are correct both are linguistically correct however uh, as we have asked some of our mashaykh uh, this morning when we uh, were reviewing for the for the lesson uh, Sheikh Mustafa Mabram he mentioned how linguistically speaking though, because the asl of the word is that it has two yas. The asl of the word is that it has two yas. It is madzum. So therefore, one of them is omitted. One of them is omitted. So that which is correct is that which we have here in front of us linguistically speaking. Although both of them yani, uh, uh, yani, linguistically sound. Wallahu alam. So we'll bypass this speech regarding uh, yani, the linguistic benefit here. Suffice with that which was mentioned. So he says, Nam, Lam Testah Yi Fasida Mashit. He says, Fihi Dik Al Haya. In this lies a mention of Al Haya. Will Haya Kama Jafil Hadith Al Akhar Will Haya O Shu'abatun Min Al Iman. As you mentioned earlier, that other narration which mentions that Haya is a branch amongst the branches of Al Iman. And it is something which is on the inside. The reality of it is that it is something which is on the inside. At times you find that haya it is innate. Meaning that a person is created with it. A person is created with it. It's a part of their natural character. And other times it comes by way of it is It is acquired. So some people... They are naturally modest. They are naturally shy people. While others, they came up a certain way wherein they weren't raised with this characteristic. They didn't have it all their lives. But perhaps Allah Ta'ala favored them with the deen of Al-Islam. And they learned the virtue of al haya And they began to adopt this as a characteristic of theirs until it became a part of their character. Now, and so... Uh, at times it comes like this, and at times it comes that way. As for if it comes naturally, meaning it's innate inside of a person, then about the nashakun hayyan or hayyan, some of the people they are like this, they are naturally shy and modest. As has come in the authentic narration that a man amongst the Ansar, it is as if he was censoring and rebuking his brother for his hot for his, his hayat. He was, in his viewpoint, a little too shy for a man to be. And so he was rebuking him and censoring him for that. 
Naam. And so the Messenger of Allah alayhi salam, upon seeing this, he said, Da'hu, leave him alone. He said, leave him alone. Fin al min al iman. Because that shyness which he has, it is from al iman. It is from al iman. Naam. And likewise, it is reported from him authentically that he said, alayhi salam, in another narration, al hayau la ya'ti illa bi khayrin. That haya does not bring along with it except goodness. A person having this, a sense of shyness with himself, a sense of modesty with him or herself, it does not bring along with it except goodness. So haya, it is something yani, which is a branch of any man, as you mentioned, that is batina. It is something which is hidden. It is innate, or it is inside of the person, rather. It is inside of the person. So irregardless if a person may present themselves as though they're a shy person in public, the reality of this affair is that it is batina. It is inside. It is inside. And Allah Ta'ala knows best the people's realities. Now, and so it is like this, that it comes at times being innate. And at other times it comes being acquired. It comes being acquired. And if a person does not have it, innately, and then to acquire it and strive to adorn oneself with it and to learn its characteristic and adopt it, it is something which is ma'murun bihi. We've been commanded with that. And we should do so. And we should do so. Now, and we should not be amongst those individuals who think that having a sense of shyness and shame is something which is blameworthy. As we find in this day and time in which we live, Many of the people, they've lost this beautiful characteristic. And they have ridiculous statements such as what? There's no shame in my game. As if shame and shyness is something blameworthy. Now, so we should strive to adorn ourselves with this characteristic. Even if we weren't raised upon it. Even if we didn't have it for much of our lives. It is something which is commanded with. And... We should have a sense of shyness from Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. We're going to see, inshallah, ta'ala, and that which is to come, and how some of the mashaykh they have mentioned the levels of this haya, the levels of it. And there are four in number, we will mention that in its place, inshallah. Ta'ala. We should have a sense of shyness from Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, such that one strives to remain distant away from the muharramat, those things that are impermissible, out of Shyness from his Lord. And shyness from his Lord seeing him upon a state that is blameworthy. Or falling short in his obligations. Because Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, he loves to see his servant with this characteristic. A sense of shyness from him, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And he is pleased with that. So therefore the hayat that is muktasab, that is acquired, it is. Is something or yani, that the individual it was uh, it did not initially have in the side of his heart, but he strove until he acquired that. And this is something which is likewise praiseworthy. He mentioned concerning the statement of the Prophet either lam that if you did not have shyness and do whatever it is that you will, ikhtalafa fihi al ulama ala qawlain. Concerning the meaning of it, concerning the meaning of this statement in the ulama, they have two statements regarding it. They differ, and they have two statements regarding its meaning. The first statement, من العلماء من قال إنه أمر That amongst the ulama, there are those who say that it is a command. There are those who say that it is a command. And they say that the meaning of the hadith, therefore, is that that if whatever affair you intend to do, whatever affair you intend to embark upon, if it does not contain anything within it that one should be ashamed of, then do whatever you wish amongst those actions. If you intend to embark upon something, whether it may be some speech that you intend to say, whether it may be some action that you intend to do, some garment that you intend to wear, 
or what have you, some characteristic that you intend to adorn yourself with, if it does not have anything within it that one should be ashamed of, then feel free to partake in it. Feel free to partake in it. Feel free to make that statement. Feel free to hold that belief. Feel free to do that action or to wear that garment and the likes of that. Feel free to do so. Now, because this is an affair which the believers will not have shyness from, meaning that if that affair is not haram and it does not contain something which goes against and contradicts makarim al-akhlaq or uh, upright moral character and dignity and honor and it does not contain negligence regarding an obligation of Allah wa ta'ala upon you it does not contain any of those things that the legislation deems to be blameworthy then feel free to embark upon that feel free to embark upon that too badly, and you don't have anything to worry about you have nothing to worry about because the fact that it does not contain something inside of it that is blameworthy legislatively is an evidence that there's no harm with the action. There's no harm with that action. And this statement is a statement of a group of the people of knowledge from them, Ishaq. Likewise, Imam Ahmed and a large group amongst the people of knowledge. <clears throat> this is the first statement. The second statement amongst the statements of the ulama is that it is not a command. It is not a command. And when you look at it in light of this second statement, it's going to have two possible meanings. So the first statement is that it is a command. The second statement is that it is, a not, is not, a, a, not a command. Therefore, it not being a command, it will have two possible interpretations. Now, the first wajh, the first possible interpretation. Qalu, they say that, yani, that it is rather a tahdi, it is a threat. It is rather a threat. So it is not a command, but rather a threat. Now, so he is saying, therefore, if you have no shame, if you are the type of person that has no shame with yourself, then you are subject to do anything. You are subject to do anything. Now, meaning that whoever does not have shame that will prevent him from embarking upon things that are haram that will prevent him from speaking a certain way, from saying certain things, doing certain things, or will prevent her from broadcasting her sins upon social media, that will prevent you from being in a situation that you know you should not be in. If you have no shame that will prevent you from these things, fuss not my shit. You're going to find such a person doing whatever. They will do whatever they want to do. Now, and this statement is similar to the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala where he said, Say that the haq is from your Lord. So whoever wills, let him believe. Whoever wills, let him disbelieve. It is not a license to disbelieve. It is not a license to disbelieve. Rather, it is a tahdeed. It is a threat. For the one who chooses to do so. A threat for the one who chooses to do so. Now. So he mentions that. For the one who does not have any haya inside of him. There's no good in him. That individual who has no haya. That will be a means of checking him. From saying certain things. Doing certain things. Being caught in certain situations. There is no haya that will check him or stop him or her from that. There's no khair, no good in such a person. There's no good in such an individual. So therefore, by way of this, the narration comes indicating a tahdeed. It comes indicating a tahdeed. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned that Al Haya, it is mushtaqa, it is extracted from or derived from the word Al Hayah, meaning what? Life. Life. 
Okay, so it comes from the word that means life. So therefore, Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that the one who has no haya in him, it's as if he has no life. It's as if he has no life. A dead man walking, as they say. And so, the second wajh, the second possible interpretation or meaning, when you look at it as not being an amr or a command, is that a group of the people of knowledge stated that it comes bearing the meaning of a khabar, of some information about the people's state and condition. That when the people do not feel shyness or shame from certain things, you're going to find the people doing all types of affairs. All types of affairs. They will do all types of things. Why? Because there is no shame to prevent them from doing those things. It is khabar. It is information informing you about the reality of people. That once shyness and shame is removed, then the people will do whatever they feel. They will do whatever it is that they want to do. And so these are the two statements amongst the statements of the ulama regarding the interpretation of the meaning of this narration. But shyness, however, it has that from it which is blameworthy. It has that from it that which is blameworthy. And that which is blameworthy from it is shyness that will prevent a person from one, from enjoining the good and prohibiting the evil while he has the ability to do so. So your shyness should not prevent you from enjoining the good and prohibiting the evil if you have the ability to do so. You should not be so shy that you don't want to speak a word of truth. You don't want to speak a word of truth when that word of truth needs to be spoken. As the Bashan of Allah ﷺ, he was shy. He had shyness to the point that he was described in his shyness as having a shyness that was similar to the shyness of the virgin girls. He, was, he had extreme shyness. So your shyness, yet you find that the mission of Allah, he would become angry for the sake of Allah Ta'ala whenever he saw the sanctities of Allah being violated, or Allah's religion being violated, he became angry for the sake of Allah Azawajal. His shyness would not prevent him from speaking a word of truth. And likewise, shyness it should not prevent one from seeking beneficial knowledge. Shyness should not prevent an individual from seeking beneficial end. You have this narration that comes on the authority of Um Sulaim al Ansariya, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she came to ask the Messenger of Allah, alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, ya Rasulullah, inna Allah la yastahyi min al haq. O Messenger of Allah, indeed Allah ta'ala is not shy from the truth. He does not shy away from telling the truth. فَهَلْ عَلَى الْمَرْأَى غُسْرٌ إِذَا اِحْتُمِلَتْ Is it upon the woman to perform ghusl if she has a wet dream? The nature of this question is something that one will be customarily shy from mentioning. But it's in the affair of seeking beneficial knowledge. Seeking beneficial knowledge and seeking a ruling amongst the rulings of the religion. So shyness should not prevent one from seeking beneficial knowledge and seeking a ruling when, we, when you are in need of that ruling. As Um Sulaim came and she asked this question, and the Messenger of Allah informed her, Naam, yes, it is upon her to make ghusl, if she sees the fluid, if she sees the fluid. Some of the ulama they have mentioned, or they have categorized shyness, into various types. And from those types, there are four. So if you're taking notes, take these notes, inshallah. Ta'ala. The first of them, you heard throughout the course of the, of the talk, and that is haya min Allah. Having al haya, having shines from Allah wa ta'ala. This is the first. The second of them, al haya min al malaika. Having shines from the angels. Having shyness from the angels. The third of them, Al Haya Min Al Nas. Having Al Haya from the people. Having shyness from the people. The fourth, Al Haya Min Al Nafs. Having shyness within yourself. Having shyness within or from yourself. 
As it relates to the first of them, it was what? Shine is from who? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And so, when an individual has within himself shine is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this will lead the individual to strive to stay away from those things that Allah has made impermissible, strive to stay away from falling short in his obligations. Because he does not want his Lord to see him upon his state. So he has shyness from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. His shyness from Allah Azza wa Jal prevents him from doing certain things, acting a certain way, being in certain situations, broadcasting his sins for the whole world to see. To the point that you find some individuals even boasting and bragging about disobedience to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Boasting and bragging about it. Shyness should prevent an individual from doing any of that. Shyness from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Because the individual knows that Allah Ta'ala sees him in whatever situation he's within. There's nowhere that you can go when Allah Ta'ala does not see you. So Allah Ta'ala mentions, Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Does he not know that Allah Ta'ala is looking at him? He sees him when he's alone in that room with that phone. Allah Ta'ala sees her when she is alone in her house with that computer. Allah Ta'ala sees you in that situation. Because of the way that the individuals act and as if they don't know. Do they not know or does he not know that Allah Ta'ala is watching him and sees him? Shine is from Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala. It has come in its authentic narration from the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam that it's been authenticated by Imam al-Albani, greatest Sahih, within his book Sahih al-Jami'ah. He said, Astahyu min Allah haqqul hayat. He told his companions, have a shyness from Allah as shyness should be had from him. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They said, O Messenger of Allah, إِنَّا نَسْتَحْيِ Indeed, we have shyness from Allah. We are shy from Allah. قَالَ He said, it is not as you say or not as you think. But rather, he says, The individual who has shined from Allah, shine should be had from him. He will safeguard his head and what he allows to enter into it. From music, from the speech of Ahl al-Bid'a, from any movies and the likes of that, he will safeguard his head and what he allows to enter into it. Now, well, button woman hawa, he will safeguard his belly and what he allows to enter into that. From alcohol, from consuming the wealth of others unjustly, from any means that were ill-gotten and the likes of that, he will safeguard his belly. And what he allows to enter into it. He says, And he will remember death. He will remember death and that true calamity, meaning Yamul Qiyama. Woman Arad al Akhira Taraka Zina Dunya. And the one who truly desires the hereafter, he will abandon those temporary and fleeting beautiful things of this dunya. فَمَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ اسْتَحْيَ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ الْحَيَاةِ The one who does all of that has had shyness from Allah Ta'ala as shyness should be truly had from him. The second of them was what? Shyness from the angels. Shyness from those angels who do not leave your side, who see you upon every state and condition and are writing down those actions that you do, one should have shyness from those angels such that he does not want those angels, those righteous servants of Allah Ta'ala to witness him or her upon some improper situation or characteristic or speech or action. Some of the Sahaba, they said, men la You have along with you those who don't leave you. You have along with you those who do not leave you, meaning your scribe angels. 
فَاسْتَحْيُوا مِنْهُمْ So therefore, be shy of them and have respect for them. And have respect for them. Allah Ta'ala, He has alerted us to this reality wherein He said, وَنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ Indeed, you have along with you preserving angels. Kiraman Katibin. He described them as being Kiram. They are noble, meaning they are not ignoble. They are not يعني, a creation that is lowly and despicable. Rather, they are noble, as Allah has described them. And He has described them as Katibin, writers or scribes. Ya'lamuna ma taf'alun. They know that which you. Do. They know that which you do. When you're in that situation where you think you're alone, you're not alone. You're not alone. Allah Ta'ala sees you. And He has angels that are there with you, preserving and writing down your statements and your actions. Ibn Qayyim mentions, Rahmatullah alayhi, I, commenting upon this set of verses, meaning, Estahyu min ha'ula. Al-Hafidin al-Kiram, meaning be shy from these noble, preserving angels. And have respect for them, honor them. He says, and be ashamed that they should see you upon some state or condition that you will be ashamed from someone who is like you seeing you do. Meaning just as you would be shy from an elder or from a respected uh, 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 member of your community, whether it is a relative or some respected brother in the community. And in some individuals, they may do some things, and if an elder from the community were were to bend the corner and see you doing that, you may have a heart attack. You may fall out. So just as you would have respect from someone who was similar to you, mean a human being just like you, have respect from those angels. Have respect from those angels. He says, well, Malaika tata'adha mimma yata'adha minhu banu Adam. Because the angels are offended by those things that offend the children of Adam. They are offended by those things that offend the children of Adam. He says, For either kana banu Adam yata'adha mimman yafjur wa ya'si bayna yaday. If it is the case that the son of Adam, he would be offended. If he were to see somebody committing fujur, wickedness, and transgression, and sin, and disobeying Allah Ta'ala in front of him, even if he were to do that very same sin, even if he were to secretly do that very same sin, but you were to do that in front of him, he may be offended by way of that. What makes you think you can do that in front of me? What makes you think I want to be a party to your sin and your disobedience? Even if he struggles with the same thing in the prophecy of his own home, he would be offended by way of that. What do you think about the angels who never commit sins? They never commit sins. They never disobey Allah Ta'ala. They would be even more so offended. So we should have shyness from those angels. Thirdly, one has al haya from the people. One has haya from the people. From the ridiculous statements that we hear, from some of the juhalas, they say, well, I'm grown. I'm grown. And we were taught, and even from quote-unquote jahili wisdom, that being grown doesn't mean what? It doesn't mean that you do what you want to do. It means you do what you're supposed to do. It doesn't mean that you just go about doing and saying any old thing. Rather, you do and you say what is proper if you're truly grown. If you're truly grown. Nah. But some of the people, they think like this. And they have no shyness from whoever sees them doing whatever they may see them do. And they think that this is something which is praiseworthy. They think that this is something which is noble. And they think that to hide and cover your shortcomings and your sins and to conceal them is from some type of two-facedness or hypocrisy. La Allah. It's not the case. It is not the case. Rather, you should hide your shortcomings. Hide your sins. And don't be so bold as to, as, to do these sins, as to do these sins for the whole world to see. Not having any shame from the people whatsoever. Hudayfa ibn Yaman, he said, لَا خَيْرَ فِي مَنْ لَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ النَّاسِ 
There's no good in a person who does not have shyness from the people. Person just doesn't care whoever sees him doing what? Who they has has what? There's no good in such a person. There's no good in this individual. Now, and so therefore, he says, so whatever you would hate the people should see you doing openly, then don't do it even when you're in private. Don't do it even when you're in private. Which brings us to the fourth and final type and category of haya, and that is what? It is what? Shining from yourself. There's certain things that you just won't do. Should be certain things that you just won't do. Have a sense of self worth. Have a sense of valuing who you are as a Muslim, who you are as a Muslim man, as a Muslim woman. Certain things and situations you just won't get caught dead in, inshallah ta'ala. You should have shined from yourself. As some of the salat they would say, Men amala fi sir amalan yastahi minhu fil alaniya. Whoever does an action in private that he would be shy to do in public, he has no sense of self-worth. He has no sense of self-worth. He doesn't believe that he is worth anything. He himself doesn't even believe that he's worth anything. Because he does things in private that he is scared to do in front of the people. So the person should likewise have a sense of shyness from him or herself such that they just won't do certain things. You just won't say certain things or get caught in certain situations. This is that which we wanted to mention as a brief reminder to ourselves and you, likewise, concerning this highly important topic. And there's much more that could be said regarding it, but we will suffice with that which, which, has, been, which has been mentioned. Allah ta'ala is best. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa khiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi wa barakatuh.